Today we're talking about Discordia. We're talking about a guide for her, how to play her in general, what to pay attention to, which items to use and how to level her. In the context of this build you will also find out if I legitimately think that you should build a mental of Discord on her or if that's just a joke. Let's begin with the general overview of Discordia and how I would place her. Now first of all, Discordia is a very team dependent character. I've made my fair share of experiences with her on both PTS and in casual games and I can honestly say that she does excel with a team that knows how to emphasize on her crowd control, on her control across the team fight. other than that. And if you don't have that, she's a much different character and she doesn't really reach her full potential and you will also have to build her differently, at least to some degree. The guard that she's most comparable to in that regard, in my opinion, is Isis. They look alike for a reason. Not only because of the fact that you both have these ultimates that rely on your teammates to fully reach their best potential and their full effect, but also other things like, in Isis' case, emphasizing on the silence and protection reduction or the stun. With Discordia, it's more about abusing the two and especially the three, ideally, to get the cooldown resets or reduction. While she is incredibly strong with a team that emphasizes on her control, she is much weaker without it as she has very limited 100 to 0 potential unless she's very ahead. Before we get into the damage stats a little more, let's take a look at this graph that I made here to give you a bit of an idea of where I think she excels and where she's not that good. Her damage is for a mage below average. She obviously is a damaging character and so she will never completely fall flat on damage, but others just do better in that regard. Her objective secure is somewhat weak. She does not have an ultimate to secure objectives very well. She can only basically get enemies off the objectives with her ult. But she does have her one. Not the best tool to secure, but especially the popping out stars, I will call them here, will do a decent am amount of damage to anything in the jungle, basically anything that's around the wall. And with that damage you may be able to secure sometimes, but it's not even close to something like an Isis ult, a Poseidon crack, and Ra snipe, anything along those levels. Her mobility is there, but it's somewhat low. Now different from other mages, she does have a leap, which is an escape but the leap is relatively short ranged. However, her survivability is more around average and that's because after that leap she will also get a stealth. The stealth is only in a specific area and you can easily hit that if you have like larger AoE abilities, but it still enhances her survivability over her pure mobility in itself. Her rotations aren't fast, but it doesn't mean that she necessarily always dies when she gets caught out. Her strongest suit is without a doubt her crowd control and utility. Not only can she turn enemies against each other, not only disrupting their movement towards her, but also turning their camera, which is really confusing in the middle of a teamfight. But she also does have the ultimate which will cripple an enemy and basically make them a walking bomb that cannot do anything but walk away from his allies or hit them with the ability as well. More confusion in a weird way caused through the VGS and all that kind of stuff. So a lot going into that. That is very unusual CC, but very useful. And on top of that, she also has her passive that should not be undervalued, the utility that you get through getting power to your strongest ally. It's rarely gonna be Discordia herself. She's not the character that you typically look for for top damage, but most of the time you will have an ally performing very well through the extra power that they're getting through Discordia. Especially in early stages, the trading advantage a hunter or a solo laner would be able to get through this can be quite nice. Discordia doesn't heal, so no points here. Now let's put Discordia's damage numbers into perspective a little more. I take Scylla as the comparison guard here simply because they both have an escape, both of similar kinds in a way at least. One is more telegraphed, the other one is shorter, but well, it kind of adds up. Uh, one is a pure damage character, almost pure damage character, and the other one is much more of a utility character. Scylla's CC is in her 1, thus 260 damage plus 75% scaling. Discordia CC is in her 2, does 220 damage, plus 70% scaling. Then Scylla's 2 is her main damaging skill, 320 base damage, plus 90% scaling. Whereas Discordia uses her 1 for that, has 250 flat damage, plus 75% scaling, and then every star hits for another 20, plus 10%. In most cases, you will not hit more than one star in a target. There is the odd case out where you can hit many stars if an enemy is right underneath the ball basically, but that is so unlikely and a huge misplay by the enemy basically that I will not factor that in here. 
And then for the ultimate, Scylla has 800 damage plus 120% scaling, with Discordia in total between the two detonations has 600 damage plus 100% scaling. Both have ways to enhance the ultimate either through killing someone or through having enemies close to each other. In total damage, that means 1380 damage plus 285% scaling for Scylla, 1070 damage plus 245% scaling for Discordia, and if you hit one star it's 1090 plus 255%. That means we're losing roughly 300 damage and depending on which number we're going for here like 30 to 40 percent scaling. Scylla also by default has shorter cooldowns on her 1 and 2 though Discordia can decrease hers in return. On top of all that Discordia brings her massive amount of utility to the table which compensates for the damage that she may be lacking but also explains why she's maybe not designed to 1v1 gods constantly. Note here that I'm not saying these numbers are balanced yet, I'm just trying to paint a picture for you of how this guard works and how they are compared to others. Another strength that Discordia has is her easy clear. If you build Soulstone, she can pretty much clear almost instantly on level 1, and she has an extremely easy jungle clear with no mana issues at all. You can use the 1 and 2 constantly and you will be fine, so as long as you have your starter and maybe Bombast, you will be okay either in mid or in jungle when it comes to your mana. Cooldown reduction is an extremely useful stat on her early on, but I don't think it's needed excessively as you will have the cooldown reduction through your 3 later in the game once you level that up. Obviously it's nice to have a lower cooldown on the ultimate as well, which is not affected by the 3, so it can be used for that and it depends a bit more on her playstyle, we'll get to that in more detail later. Her 1 procs everything on the stars, which will explain some of the later item choices. So if you build Ethereal, Soul Reaver, Dem of Isolation, it does proc on the small individual stars that by themselves don't really do much damage, but in a team fight, you can throw out a star and hit pretty much everyone with Dem of Isolation. Another thing to skip ahead here a little bit is that depending on your playstyle, you can skip Obsidian Shard. She has a long range and very free choices when it comes to her targets most of the time, so if you are able to focus out the squishies, and you are not the best at bursting tanks either way, once again, through the relatively low damage compared to other mages, then you can just opt for just focusing squishies with items that support that, rather than going for obsidian shard. Her playstyle overall is something of a backline playstyle, hanging behind walls quite often, ideally fighting in the jungle, but then also switching over to a very aggressive playstyle depending on the situation. If you get a lead or a kill, you can easily switch over, you kind of have to think in the same way that you think with Thoth. With Thoth, you would usually play defensively and poke from the backline, but then if you see the potential to do more, you dash forward through your wall and stun someone and just take them out. And that's what she does by using her 3, staying in the fog for a little bit, resetting her cooldowns and basically finishing someone off with her whole combo once again. In the same context, it's important to note though that her ultimate does not go through walls, meaning you will have to position yourself in a way or bounce it off walls so that you hit enemies behind walls. Her leveling priority is pretty straightforward, so I don't have to do an exact leveling order here. In the first three levels, you should be getting all your first abilities. Your one should be the very first one, and then either depending on the situation, your two or the three. After that, the priority shifts to the one, and the overall leveling priority will always be your four, Golden Apple of Discord, then one, Unruly Magic, which is just the best clear tool she has and the best poke tool with its cooldown and so on. And then it's a matter of preference. If you want to have a little bit more damage, you can go for Strife, it just increases your damage overall. And I quite often found that useful because, once again, she doesn't have the highest damage to begin with. Otherwise, go for Erratic Behavior to reduce the cooldowns of your 1 and 2, which is especially better if you're looking to play with a team and disrupt as much as possible over doing the highest damage. While the ultimate only increases in damage, I feel like it's very worth leveling because the ultimate should always remain one of the big threats and should force enemies to move away instead of just laughing at the damage. And that brings us to the item choices. Discordia is very flexible here depending on your playstyle, so I will not give you one full build, but rather two kind of paths that you can go along. The first choice is already a starter item. If you build Soulstone, you will pretty much have instant clear from level 1, which is very, very nice for her and elevates a bit of her early game, which is otherwise not the greatest. At the same time, if you build Sands of Time, you get that early cooldown reduction, which is very beneficial. She will not have mana issues in either case, so you should probably not look to build both, because it's a bit too much investment into mana generation if you do that. The same situation, however, applies for boots. I would generally build pen boots on most mages in early game, it's just a very useful stat to have 
just that extra damage that you can put out. But when you don't put out the highest damage numbers to begin with, then cooldown reduction boots can be very nice and build up a better late game. If you have 20% CDR at this point, that can really benefit you if you have a team to work around it. If your team doesn't do anything, then you're better off with Soulstone and Pen Boots and just doing the maximum amount of damage. Her cooldown does not get as ridiculous as the Morrigan, so it's not quite as forced to go onto cooldown reduction, but it is very beneficial, especially to have that ultimate up for every single cooldown. And early on, you will not have erratic behavior to help you with your cooldowns. You have to keep in mind that your main damage is your one, and your one doesn't do anything but damage, different from, for example, Ice's Spirit Ball if you were to level that. Even Scylla's Crush comes with more utility through a slow, so really, if you're still in the part where you have to primarily clear, you will not do that much for your team yet. It's more later stages that you really shine, and that's when you have your other abilities on higher ranks as well. The item afterwards, again, is a decision that should be based on your playstyle. The one that I mostly preferred is Spear of Desolation. It takes away a bit from the team dependence. If you don't have any sort of penetration until this point, it's definitely the best choice. It will give you that extra cooldown reduction on top of the one that you already have. It gives you the extra penetration and it gives you a decent amount of extra damage so you don't have to worry about damage items for a longer time. On the other hand, there's also Gem of Isolation which will give you enhanced survivability and it will give you that slow setup for your team through the one, which can be really good at this point already if your team is fighting as a team if they can emphasize off your slows. Third option here would be Divine Ruin if they have too much heal. In most scenarios, it will be one of those three. We will assume Spear of Desolation here, so we can proceed with the build without mentioning it again. After that, there's two items that we can discuss that you probably want to build in most situations on most mages, but that you don't necessarily always have to build here. The first one is Obsidian Shard. Again, if you're focusing out squishies, you're not making too much use out of that, especially if you already have double flat pen. So Obsidian Shard is something that can be considered, but also something that can be skipped. What you should not build in this regard is Spear of the Magus. There's no benefit for you in building that. The only way to proc this multiple times is her one. Everything else is just a one-hit thing. So really stay away from it. No point in building it. Road of Tahuti can be good. It's a massive power spike, but she can benefit a lot from utility items as well. So sometimes I would just not opt into it if I feel like the main damage is not what I need, but rather I want to disrupt more in the backline. If you were to build them, it would probably be around this point. Also, she doesn't benefit all too much from power stacking items like either Doom Orb or Book of Thoth, from attack speed items or from the rings in general. All these items kind of don't really synergize with her kit. And again, she doesn't have the best scaling, the best power. And from what we know she's designed to be like, we can expect those to maybe even be nerfed further. So that's not the kind of part of her that you really want to invest into. There are other options though that I would highly recommend. If we're looking towards the more damagey side, the items that I would recommend are ethereal stuff. Again, it, the damage procs off every single star, so you'll definitely hit it, even at long range, and it makes a single star from the one a lot more painful. Soul Reaver, exactly the same thing here, just that it hurts even more. And even Polynomicon. She only has two main damaging abilities outside of her ultimate, instead of three that some mages have, and Polynomicon can really make up for that. Plus, she has relatively low cooldowns, especially in combination with her three, and hitting basics from the stealth can really hurt when they hit with Polynomicon and the enemy doesn't expect it, and you can basically double charge it there as well. On the other side of the spectrum, we have Pythagoras Peace, which is just an overall nice utility item and also offers you some cooldown reduction, which can always help, obviously. We have Kronos Pendant, which I am not completely opposed to on Discordia. Again, I wouldn't rush it too early, but here the cooldown reduction can help if you want to play more around the ultimate and more around the two. And you have Gem of Isolation, again, which procs off the one of the stars as well. So, depending on which branch you're going down here, you can go for a lot of damage or a lot of utility or something in between, and these item choices are all decently viable on her. Now, I wouldn't build a Kronos Pendant on her before I have built something like Spear of Desolation, but overall the choice between utility and damage is always there. If you want to build lifesteal items outside of Pythagoras and Poly, you should probably opt for Book of the Dead over Bancroft. The damage that she can put out while she's already low isn't as high as, for example, that of a Sol or most other gods that make very good use of Bancroft. The extra power doesn't benefit her all that much, and you will usually have your ult thrown out already at that point. So Book of the Dead with that extra survivability from the start should help you a lot more, especially since you can then abuse the stealth of the three. If we're looking for absolutely defensive items, I would look at Magi's Blessing if you just need to get out of CC. And yes, Mantle of Discord. 
The reason here is quite simple. When Discordia is low, you will usually try to escape the enemy by using your 3 and ending up in the cloud. The cloud will then lower your cooldowns while you're in it. If an enemy hits you right when you hit the cloud or when you're in the cloud already, trying to kill you and you're at the threshold for Mental of Discord, which will happen quite often, this is kind of the area that will be around uh, when it happens, they may get stunned. And if they get stunned, that gives you extra time in the cloud, allowing you to reduce your cooldowns, meaning by the time that they are no longer stunned, your cooldowns may actually be up again and you may be able to put up a fight once again. And that, I think, is very crucial in how you play her. And as she benefits from cooldown reduction to begin with, the stats on this item otherwise are not bad when looking towards the defensive side. I do think that a more bruiser build is actually possible as well, especially looking at something crazy like maybe Discordia Solo. Or if you want to go out, even Discordia Support. Items like Void Stone, like Jade Emperor's Crown, can all help her team and she can apply them quite easily without being hit as much. If you combine that with a decent amount of cooldown reduction, then she can do so much through her 3. You will always have the option to go into your 3, and if you're tanky enough, you're not gonna die in your 3, and then you can use your 2 again, cause more disruption throughout a fight. And if you're tanky enough, you may have a chance to get multiple 3s off in one team fight. In that regard, even items like Warlock Sash or Stone of Foul shouldn't be completely thrown out the window. I think that the cooldown reduction on the 3 is extremely potent and I could imagine it seeing nerfs, but until then I would not be entirely opposed through the idea of a more bruiser style Discordia or a tanky style Discordia. I will say that that's more of a thought experiment though. In either case, Vamp Shroud is something I would probably not recommend as it does not seem to proc off the stars again after already proccing on a target. The thing you want to practice the most is ideal usage of both the 3 and the ultimate, juking in the 3 and finding out the ideal timing for the 2 without any allied setup. With allied setup it's relatively easy to hit and many guards can be very beneficial there. Especially a combination like Odin Discordia can be completely devastating, making it easy to hit both the 2 and the 3. But trying to hit all that on your own with the delay is where her 2 strength will lie when you're not as reliant on your teammates. That concludes my overview on the Scardia, how to play her and how to build her. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you're not subscribed yet and enjoyed this video, feel free to click the sub button and maybe the bell, it really helps me out. And also I will drop some codes down in the description and the comment section from time to time, so you have a chance to pick that up if you have your notification on in your quick. See you for the next one tomorrow. Duke Sloth, out!